Welcome to our UX design crash course on spatial design that will teach you the foundations of designing apps for the Apple Vision Pro. This entire free course is designed to upskill you so that in the next few months you are prepared to apply the best internships and jobs in the field of UX design. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. All right, welcome to episode four on the principles of spatial design. Now, today we will cover the third principle of spatial design, which is about making your experiences more dimensional. And then in the second module, I will just share some important free resources and a roadmap with articles and references. This time we don't have three modules because this one single module alone is pretty heavy and good enough. So let's start with module number one. See, there were five principles and our previous videos have covered the basics and the first two principles. Today, we will talk about making our app more dimensional. See, for a very long time, we were designing applications for computers and the mobile app and they only had two accesses. But now that you have Z access, now that you have a concept of space in general, you need to make sure that you understand that space because if you don't understand that 3D space, then how will you design experiences around it? We have to make sure that we leverage depth in our space anytime we are creating an experience. And we also need to understand how things scale within this 3D space. So right here is a quick example of the Apple TV app where you can actually enter a fully immersive mode where everything is blacked out and you have your screen and you also have a roof along with your floor as well. So let's understand the space that we have inside the Vision Pro. The Vision OS guidelines recommend app developers to take full advantage of the space around the user. Now the 3D canvas is infinite, right? But people's physical space is always limited. So even though you can add so many things, maybe 10 feet away, 20 feet away, on an average, a person is going to use Vision Pro probably in her room or in her living room. So even though inside the headset, the world is infinite, outside the headset, there are walls, right? So you need to be mindful about that limitation. You need to design experiences that work well in any amount of space and assume you don't know where someone might be using your application. So even when you're thinking about experiences, you need to ask yourself, would this work in a living room, in a bedroom, in a bathroom, or even a flight? where there's literally a seat in front of me, right? So if there's a seat in front of me, probably somebody would have the main window on the top in this direction, but would it still work? Is there an ability to scale windows down and fit everything, even when I'm working in a limited space? Now we're not just talking about fully immersive spaces, we're also talking about normal safari or keynote type experiences as well. And never constraint your app by the physical space available, which means that your app should never put these constraints on the user that you can only use me if you're in a big room. Never do that. So you remember we always talk about scalability, how a mobile experience should work on a small screen as well as a big screen or even on an iPad, this is very close to that responsive concept as well, that you should never have an app experience which doesn't work in limited space, right? Now let's take an example of Apple TV. In Apple TV, assume that you opened up your entire window in your living room and there's a chair, right? And if you were to move your window, it would obviously intersect with the chair, right? Because it's right in the middle. So what happens is that if a window is moved through the chair in the room, the chair would still be visible while the window is moving because you need to make it easy to place. But when the window is released, the content becomes visible so that people can see and use the app. So you will see a shift from this to this. But of course, you need to see this first because otherwise your eyes will freak out. Your eyes need to see that gradual transition of the window intersecting with the chair. But as soon as the window is placed and the position is locked, it would overlap and come on top. Right? So with windows, you don't need to worry about how they fit into somebody's space since the system handles this for you. So the system will make sure that the window is always above. Now let's understand some sub concepts within dimension. First is the concept of dimming. Now when it's time to watch a movie, if you have a window placed in the center, obviously you would want your users to give full attention. Now while the video is playing in the central window, everything outside this window is passed through, right? And I have to correct myself in the very first video, I said that pass through means that you can pass through that window. It is not that pass through basically means that you can see the real world passing through that interface, right? So all of this content, which is basically your real world is passed through, right? But this pass through is darkened and this concept is called dimming. Now dimming helps people focus on the main content because if I were to not dim things out, I would probably get distracted by everything outside, right? Now people are still aware of their surroundings. It's not like I'm blacking out everything, but 
थ्रू डिमिंग दे कैन फोकस मोर ऑन द वीडियो सो दे आर अवेयर ऑफ द सराउंडिंग विदाउट बींग लिमिटेड बाई दैम सो दीज आर सम एग्जाम्पल्स दैट आई पिक फ्रॉम एपल टी वी एंड दीज आर ऑल शोन इन एपल डॉक्यूमेंटेशन आई विल शेयर द लिंक इन द थर्ड मॉड्यूल नाउ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एक्सटेंड बियॉन्ड दिक्सटीन इज टू नाइन कंटेनर दिस इज माई सिक्सटीन इज टू नाइन कंटेनर विच वॉज ओरिजिनली यूजिंग डिमिंग यू कैन ऑल्सो expand beyond the dimensions of their physical room so this is where you black out everything and say that if you're stationary in your couch you can actually disappear everything and feel as if the video is playing in a fully immersive infinite 3d space now if your app needs more space to fit big content you can create your own larger than life experience because i'll tell you what happens if you want to show something very massive but your living room is very very small your eyes will get confused your brain will get confused your brain is going to be like in such a small room you can't fit something that massive but now if you were to hide everything at the background and if you were to create this a very large screen your eyes will essentially feel as if you're in a cinema hall because you can't see see your small living room you can create your own larger than life experience by creating an immersive world around your main content so in this example it has created an immersive cinema to make it feel as if you're sitting in a huge movie theater and this is called a full space experience earlier we had a shared space experience this is called a shared space experience where you have passed through content but in this case it is a full end to end full space experience before you move ahead i want to tell you about our latest learning website how to prom.in where you can get free ai resources road maps and step by step guides that will teach you everything that you need to know about tools like chat gpt and mid journey Now that we have understood the basics of dimension we also need to understand how we can give our experiences depth right now when it comes to depth content far away encourages people to interact at a distance whereas nearby objects invite interaction and are easier to inspect at different angles let's understand this with an example if you are in a fully immersive experience sitting in a cinema hall you would not have the urge to use your hands or to tap on something because you know that it's a larger than life experience let me sit back and enjoy whereas if i were to show something which is very close to you very small but it is right in front of you there is a nearby object which would invite interaction and you can always move your head and walk around and inspect it from different angles a small movement allows us to see the object from all sides if it is closer to us right so if this was very very big obviously you would not try to touch it you would probably let it animate but if it was very very small even a subtle movement of your neck and your eyes and your hands or uh, can help you inspect this from different angles right now let's understand how you can use depth to create hierarchy because depth is not just about creating dimension it is also a tool to create more focus and hierarchy so anything that is close to you might get more focus anything that is very very far from you might not invite interaction right so hierarchy is actually generated using depth a very similar pattern was seen in mobile design when you used to add shadows and modals so any time a modal would pop up you would see that there would be dimming at the back so it used to be called as a scrim google material guidelines used to call it a scrim some people used to call it overlay like a black blanket on all the ui behind the modal and we used to have shadows as well so that shadow used to make us feel that i can click on it in dark theme there's always assume that there's a source of light outside the phone right at the screen so as you create layers in a dark theme anything that is closer to you is on a lighter shade a lot of ui designers who are just starting out make this mistake again and again that when they are making a dark theme design they would often create darker shades of a card that is elevated that never works if you have an elevation it is always on a lighter note here we have used depth for hierarchy and just for an example let's take the tv app for vision pro here the playback controls are placed in a small and a nearby spot so this is my huge video and this playback control is actually very ahead like it's right in front of the video but because i feel that it's closer to me it is inviting interaction now even though they are very very small it is still clear that they control the movie makes sense if they were on the movie screen they would either look too large or out of place so this is how the final output would look like there's a subtle overlap you have your floor at the bottom and then you have your video container and because it is small and close to you it would invite more interaction now another very important principle of these experiences is your ability to use light 
and shadow as cues because there are some objects in the Vision Pro that emit light whereas some that create shadows. So let's understand the difference between them. Some objects will emit light like a movie screen. In this example, you have this big video playing and at the floor, it is actually reflecting light. So you can see that there's some animation happening at the bottom. The light shines on the floor, highlighting its position in the room. Makes sense. It just helps you understand how far this is from me. Now the object that appears to emit light should shine colors on the nearby objects. Now the important principle here is to understand that we are replicating how emitting objects work in the real world. So if you have a glowing object, it has to cast a light on everything that is around it. And when you're catering to a fully immersive experience, you need to be very mindful of these things because your conscious brain might not know this, but our eyes are calculating these small, small details regularly. So if your eyes see that there's a huge movie screen, but it is not emitting light on the surface and on the ceilings, it would immediately find that something is wrong. Now the second principle is about dropping shadows. So in the movie example, we had something that was emitting light, but in this case, an object can cast a shadow as well. So here we have the keynote application and you can see that it is casting a shadow on the nearby object. So this grounds them and makes them look more integrated onto the space. Now I know that they might sound very complicated guidelines, but folks, all we are trying to do here is to replicate how the real world works. If you have any objects floating right in front of you, make sure that you have incorporated a shadow. You have at least considered if it would cast a shadow or not. And then any custom objects in your app should cast shadows. So this is where you actually make the depth and the dimension come to life. When it comes to using modals on the z-axis, you should prefer very subtle depth. So it is very easy to overdo right and making things look very distracting or unrealistic but adding a very subtle depth between elements is often enough to direct people's attention so when a modal appears instead of adding something on top of that window closer to me you can actually take the entire window push it back and pop up the modal at the same spot so from this you would have something that looks like this now let me explain a very important first principle it is very difficult for our eyes to focus on objects that are moving across this z-axis it is very very easy to look on the y axis and the x axis but if you were to shift items on the z axis your eyes will get tired easily so because the window is already on say 0.0, .0 right so let's just say it is at 0, 0, 0 it is better that even the modal comes at the same point of 0, 0, 0 whereas this window right here this can be at 0, 0, minus 5 so the point here is not to make your eyes refocus the z axis another very important first principle is to make sure that your text will always be in 2d because 3d text is distracting for a very long time we've been discussing how things would have more dimension have more 3d depth into it but text is one exception so please make sure that you keep your text lat when it is being used as an interface element and i think when a modal appears the window pushes back this we've already discussed but you can obviously see in this example how terrible and distracting it looks it actually hinders your attention right now we come to the third chapter which is understanding scale in vision os psychologically small objects feel very personal and lightweight whereas large objects feel very impressive but you would often feel not interacting with them and just experiencing them so here you have a very small video playing on top of your window, right? So you feel like the content is closer to you. But in the same case, if I were to take away all the dimming and if I were to convert this from a pass through experience to a fully immersive experience, suddenly it becomes more grand. So these are small, small ways in which you can fine tune how a user experiences your entire content. Now, some objects are best viewed at their real life scale. So if I were to selling you a show, it is better to show it in its actual scale, in the actual size in which a shoe would look if it was floating on my desk. So in this example, a shopping app would prefer to display products as they would appear in real life because then they would feel more closer to you. If you were to convert this shoe viewing experience into a larger than life experience, the conversions might actually drop. So with that, we come to module number three, where I will share some free resources that you can use to practice whatever it is that we've discussed today. The resources from module three remain the same from the previous episodes. So I've put them in the PDF itself. You can download the entire presentation PDF from the link in description for free. Make sure you click on subscribe and hit the bell icon because we will be launching new episodes on UX and spatial design very soon. I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Ansh Mehra signing out. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.